Hey, good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well and staying thoughtful and at least somewhat stimulated during these weird times with COVID. However, we're doing conditional statements today, which are the if, else if, and else commands in MATLAB. Conditional statements are across every language, which is why there's a link in the description to my core coding videos that go over the basics and the general theory uh, to help out with understanding these statements and conditional statements a little bit better. We're going to go through examples here, starting very simple and then going into a cornhole example. And this is all using MATLAB syntax, um, and we'll, we'll jump in. The very first thing you need to know about these conditional statements is that you're trying to meet some condition. If x happens, then do y. And if x didn't happen, then don't do anything. That's your basic setup. Okay, and MATLAB actually offers us a really good use, or I should say description. If we type help if, because if is a function, any function in MATLAB, you can do help in that function name and it gives you information. Let's take a look here to start. <coughs> if, so it's conditionally execute statements. Yep, the general form is if statement is. Okay, so this is actually gold right here. This is how you're gonna lay out each of your if statements. And you're going to start out with if, a general expression, and we'll get into what that is in a second, do these statements, otherwise, else if, do th this expression happens, do these statements, else if both of those don't happen, do these statements, and then you end the if. Seems like it might be a lot and weird. It's not super complicated when you've got an example to put it with, okay? But always refer back to this help if command in your command window, because this gives you a lot of examples. And we're going to be using, keep, keep note of these terms right here. The double equal sign, less than, greater than. These are your logical comparison characters. Okay, this is when you're comparing two values. And these are what make up your expressions referred to above. Right, so the statements are executed. These statements are executed when the expression has all non-zero elements. Well, the expression we'll see can have an output of zero or one. Let's let's jump in. We're getting two. We're getting two in the weeds here. Okay, but we covered help if. Now, when you have logical expressions, let's say x equals five, just to start, it's a value, and we want to compare. We've got y equals ten. We want to compare these two values, and so we're going to output y greater than. T I'm sorry, y greater than x. Okay, so now we're basically asking MATLAB, hey is y greater than x. And we know here, logically, we can see that 10 is greater than 5, so the answer should be yes. But MATLAB outputs this as a binomial 0 or 1. I'm sorry, it should be binary 0 or 1. Also is true or false. 0 corresponds to false. 1 corresponds to true. This is also why you see in your vacuum cleaners, you know, the 0 and the 1 on the switches, 0 should be off one should be on. Let's jump in, let's execute this. We're going to see y greater than x is executed. Our answer pops out here as a logical because it's a zero or one. Not an integer it doesn't hold a value of one, but it's logical zero or one. Okay, this is true or false. It's one as we expect because y is in fact greater than x. Let's change this. Is y less than x? Run that. No. We get zero as the output. Is y greater than or equal? Is y greater than or equal to x? Well, the answer there, yes. And you've got all the varieties. So you can do, I believe we've got the options here of, you've got equal equal, which is asking if it's equal, not defining, right? Single equal sign is defining something. It's saying x equals 5. Double equal sign is comparing. Are these values equal? You've got greater than or equal to. You've got less than or equal to. You've got greater than. You've got less than. Big one here, um, does not equal, is the a tilde and then equals. Some other language might have this as exclamation point, equals. This is how you check if they're not equal. So if I do y does not equal x, correct. So that's an answer of one there. Now, these apply to our if statements because this is what MATLAB is asking when you, you say if. So if we say if here, now we have to put this expression in. So say if y is greater than x, which we know logically this is true. So if y is greater than x, then let's print y 
is greater than x. And then we end that. This is your most basic if statement. <laughs> I already got a syntax error. Beautiful. I'm a great teacher. Uh, let's see what this is going on. Um, see, it's okay to have issues, guys. Don't worry. Happens to the best of us. Error and conditional. If y is greater than x, print. Oh, you know what? Because print isn't a function. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not in this coding language. Uh, it might be here. Let's try display. That might be the better one. Yeah. <laughs> but see, don't worry if you screw up. We all screw up. You just got to think about what's going wrong in your in your statement. Okay, so let's, let's run through this again. Simple if statement. So if the expression, okay, this is our expression here. If y is greater than x, which we know it is, I'm just going to get rid of this here, because y is 10 and x is 5, so it's comparing these two. That evaluates yes, true, gives it a value of 1, okay, and when the line of the if is true, you evaluate the expression right after it, okay? So then this is what this gets evaluated here, and it displays y is greater than x in the command window. Let's change this. Let's say, is y greater than 15? Let's run that. Nothing's outputted. Why? Well, y is not greater than 15. That gives us a value of 0. It's false. Now the if statement doesn't execute the statements underneath. So it skips it. Bummer. Now, if you want something to still output, though, oftentimes you might. This is where else comes in. So it tries, it evaluates. Is that true? Was y greater than 15? No. So it skips the display right there. Else, okay, now in all the other cases, so when that isn't true, when y, is y greater than 15 is false, it jumps to the else. We can say display. Oh, let me display y, now it's not x here, but 15, right? y is less than 15. We can display that. <laughs> Struggling once again, here we are. Display, here, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, right, okay, so now we see y is less than 15. And if we change the value of y to 100, and we run this, well now y is greater than 15. This is your standardizing your logic here. Now there's one other thing you need to check for, and that can be your else if. Okay, you can add these else if if you have more conditions that you want to check. So else is always kind of your default. Everything else is wrong and it's false. And it drops to your else if. That's your kind of final last ditch send to the command window. If you want to add multiple conditions though, so you check is y greater than 15? No, you could do else if you need to add an expression here because you're saying another if statement. Else if y equals 15, you could display y is equal to 15. And then if both of those, if both of these aren't true, then it jumps to the else because now you've covered the three scenarios. Greater than 15, equal to 15, less than 15. Great. So now we can screw around a little bit more. It's still going to be y, yeah, y is still greater than 15 here. But if we enter in y equals 15, we'll get y is equal to 15. And there you go. And this is the basic thing. Right? We saw this. If you go help if, this is exactly what we saw in their if expression, if y is greater than 15, statements. Else if y equals equals 15. So you're comparing these values, remember? Statements. Display this. Else, we have that. And boom. That's your simple standard structure for your conditional statements. Now, they give you an example here as well, which takes the same form. Here, they're just adding values and matrices. So they're taking, this is matrix A, and they're changing the ith row and the jth column to two. Otherwise, if this, you know, they're just, they're doing a different example, but they've got equal equal statements here, so they're comparing. And also, here's a good list of your comparative uh, logical expressions here. So you've got a lot, a lot of value in that help if, so don't be afraid to use that. Now, if we're going to cornhole, a more complicated example, we're going to be basically running what I would call a simple simulation. All right, and to do that, we typically need a for loop and logical statements. Because these for loops, sorry, these conditional statements, you can put them anywhere. Right now, I've just got them in line with text, but it's often that you'll see these nested, which just means inside of a for loop. 
in the game of cornhole, we know there's three outcomes for a general throw. You're either going to totally miss the board and score zero points, you're going to hit the board and you're going to score one point, or you're going to get in the hole, which is worth three points. Right, so you've got three scenarios, and let's say I want to simulate ten throws of the game. All right, so we know right now if you want to do something multiple times, you're doing a for loop. So let's start out for i equals uh, 1 through 10, right? That's going to give us 10 throws. We know we're eventually going to end that loop. I'm just going to do it ahead of time right now. We're going to, we're going to, our minds are thinking this is a toss, right? And on a given toss, we can have those three outcomes. Let's just start with one outcome. Let's say that I hit the board 30% of the time I throw. I'm not that good at cornhole, admittedly. My older brother is very good. He destroys us, but I'm nowhere near that. But so, for I, this is our, our throw on, so we can add some comments here. So then we're going to um, do the conditional here. And then this is where we're going to add our if statement. And we're going to say if that throw, okay, but we need a variable that we're comparing something to. Let's go, okay, so let's, let's back up here. We need some sort of uh, value that would represent our throw each time. Because we want to compare this, I'm gonna, I basically want to say, and I'm just going to type it now to show you guys, but I basically just want to say if um, I hit the board, right, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. If I hit the board and the chances that are happening is 30%, yeah, that's 30, uh, maybe 35, 30%. So I want that to happen. So I'm going to want to compare a random variable which will simulate the randomness of a throw to this. So the random variables that we like to use um, are rand. And if you do rand one, it's going to give you a random value between zero and one. That's great. That's going to simulate our randomness. So the first thing we do actually is get a rand variable going here. And bear with me. It's going to. It's. It seems complicated right now. This will come together once the actual for loop is complete. But keep trying to focus on the concepts. Keep keep with me here. So this is going to be your random throw. We're going to just do, so we got rand1, as we saw there. We're just going to call this um, the throw chance variable. Sorry, throw change. Throw chance equals rand1. So every throw, we're going to develop this throw chance variable. It's going to give us a value between 0 and 1. Okay, so it's some decimal, 0 0.2, 0 0.8. And we know that there's a 30% chance that I'm getting on the board. So I'm going to do if throw chance is greater than 0.7. And why 0.7? Because when we've got values ranging from 0 to 1, I only want 30% of those values to end up. That's going to go to the next statement to say I got it on the board. All right, and to do this, I'll say display. You got it on the board. Woo! All right, now let's just do some sort of cornhole lingo. You get that corn. You get that corn. There we go. Yeah, the typical typical banter you hear in the game. Now, we could also have done another. We could also have done another option here. What do you guys think? We could have done greater than 0.7, or we could have done less than 0.3, right? Because either way, you're you're taking 30% of that kind of normal distribution, or right? You see, what I'm saying saying here, you're going to be ending up in either less than 0.3 or greater than 0.7. Cool. If we run this. Seems kind of haphazard here, but let's think about what's gonna uh, end. Okay, we gotta end our if. So we start off four, so we i is one here. Doesn't matter that much. We're just this is we're using this to loop. We're not gonna be using the index at all. We don't need to. We hit develop our random throw. Throw chance is gonna be a random value between zero and one. Okay. Now the next statement here is a conditional. So if our throw chance, this value of between zero and, and one, is less than 0.3. That's our 30% chance of hitting the board. We're going to display you get that corn and end. Let's see how well we do. Let's run this. Okay, and it's uh, outputting something here we don't want to see. Um, rand one answer. Why is it? Oh, oh, I haven't cleared. That's why. Sorry. Oh, I've got to clear. There we go. You get that. Okay. So here only two displays came out, which means that we only hit the board two times. But let's run it again. Three times, three times, two times. Ooh, four times four times, three. I'm just running this over and over and over to get the different results. See, and you can tell it random, oh, that was, a, wow, that's a really good one. That random variable is what's keeping this as a simulation, right? Because you're, you're always unknown. But as we discussed, there are other options for cornhole 
you can get on the board. That's the point three percent or point three chance, thirty percent chance. You can also get in the hole. Let's say you got that board, and we want to add now. So then, else if the row chance is greater than one in twenty, I get in the hole. That's 0 0.05. This means I got that cornhole, and that chance is one in twenty, which is five percent. Cool. And this is, by the way, this is a really good way to keep your statement and the actual what it means together. That's just going to help you to to keep everything together and then when you go back to your code you're going to understand why you chose those values. I also could be doing something else and I'll show you that in a sec where you can just take these values out and I can put um, board chance equals 0.3 and I can compare this then to board chance. This just makes it a bit cleaner in your code so I can only I can change values out here um, and then I can do um, whole chance equals 0.05. Yeah, let's do that. Whole chance. There. And what happens if else if we're going to display you got the hole or in the hole? It's in in your in your corn hole in in the hole as inappropriate. Uh, all right, let's see how this runs. But remember, now we just added so that we have the if. If this happens, great. So when this is wrong, we'll execute the else if. Else, if this happens, so if the less than the whole chance, it's now for less than 0.05. Uh, but we also open that up to being, we should do this, we should be, um, ah, it gets confusing sometimes with these examples. We should do this um, if, this is greater than, uh, let's try this less than for now and see what happens. I'm trying to logic through to make sure that these don't happen at the same time, right? Because that can be dangerous. You don't want them both to execute because you can't both get it on the board and in the hole. You know what I'm saying? So if the throw chance is less than 0.3, okay, display, you got on the board, good. And then we actually want to do so then that would execute and that'd be fine. Okay, and if it's less than 0 0.05, ah, okay, so there's the issue. So what happens is, let's say that the whole chance is 0 0.04, okay? And logically you want that to say, oh good, we're gonna get that in the hole. The problem is the if statement will capture that in this first part because it's 0.04 is also less than 0.3. And so it's gonna say we got on the board and then skip this statement so we can actually never get it in the hole. And if we run this even a, a thousand times, which is going to be overwhelming, but we'll see that we actually never get it in the hole through the entire <laughs> thing, right? So it's a good logic statement for your own code. You can just run this a bunch of times and you'll see if you're wrong or not, <laughs> as I am. Let's instead change this now to 0.95 and we're going to flip the sign here to be greater than so if it's less than 0.3, 30% chance of getting on the board, we've got that 5% chance that's going to be in the hole. Let's run this now a thousand times. And now we can see we've got an occasional in the hole, in the hole. Wow, pretty good right around here. Geez, that's rare. Um, board, 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 board. Yeah. And of course, we're missing the other, because we haven't just, we don't display when we don't get on the board or anything else. We could do that. And that final else, display. I'm not sure if we do it actually, do we do it at that point in the else? We can do it in the next line here. So else display you missed. I'm gonna lower this to a hundred because a thousand outputs is a lot. But here if we go to the top, we can start to see we missed, we got in the board, in the hole, you missed, you missed, you missed. And now we can calculate a score. We've just been displaying things for now, but let's calculate a score. To do this, let's get a score value uh, variable going, and we're gonna add values to this as we go. So score is going to start at a zero, and then we're going to enter the for loop after 100 throws, and then we'll have a final score that we can look at at the end. We've still got our random throw good, so if we hit the board, we're going to display you got that board, and we're also going to add one value to score. Now what is this statement doing? So score right now, when we start off, score is going to be zero. 
Okay, and this is our first throw, and then we're going to add 1 to 0 to add. Now we're overwriting score. Okay, so score started out as 0, we're adding 1 to it, and now the, the new score is going to be 1. And then the next throw, it's going to go back through the loop. Remember, we don't go back up to this. We don't execute these statements again. We're still within the for loop. This is all condensed in the for loop here. Score is 1 on the next loop, and then we go down again, and then we're rewriting score every single time if any of these statements are true. Because right, if it goes to this else, we're not writing anything to score. Score not affected here. It just stays the same. This is getting a little bit congested. Let's just open up some space here. This helps to see these better. So we have score plus one. If we get in the hole, what happens to score? Score equals score plus three. And the score is not affected in this case. We run this. Oh, we got the, these are getting kind of annoying. Let's take, I'm just gonna keep the ones in the hole just cause that's more ex exciting to have that. Um, I don't need to say that I missed. And we want to output the final value of score here. So our final score is 29. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and so that's kind of your, your overview. I don't think I need to go too much further into this, uh, but it's now starting to build. So we had a nested. This is technically called like a nested conditional statement because it's within another function, which is the for loop. Okay. And then we're actually able to calculate some scores. And then you could do a bunch of stuff like, you know, you end the game when... A certain value is hit, but there's one more thing I need to I need to cover here just quickly is uh, the and because you might have multiple conditions that you want to talk about when you're doing these conditional expressions. So let's talk about and. And so let's say you have a value x equals five, and you have x lower, and these are going to act as limits. X lower and x upper um, equals. Two, let's say the upper limit for x is going to be 10, the lower limit is going to be 2. Now, let's press the output of these. If you've got something that's going to be, you want to check two conditions on it, right? Up here we're just checking one condition, but you can check multiple conditions on something. And so I can say if x is less than x upper limit, right, less than x upper, and I believe it's a double and sign, we'll see if we get an error or not, and x is greater than the x lower limit, we want to display x within proper bounds. Cool. Else, if that's not true, we're going to display x is out of control. Okay, and that whole thing. Cool. Let's run this. Let's clear the above stuff. Clear all, CLC, get a nice command window. Cool. X within the proper bounds, right, as we expect, because it meets both criteria here. If we also want to do, if we just to try the other scenario, always get to test your scenarios. I've got 11. It's out of control because it fails just one of these, right? If you fail one item in an and, you're, you're donezo. You're donezo, right? So because we're, we're out of our bounds. The other option here is to do or, and that's a vertical line. It should be on your same slash key. You want this vertical line. So this is only if one of these are true, then we execute. So we'd say x meets meets one, one condition. And now this is um, be x meets meets neither. Which one? My oh dear, neither. So now x is 11. We go into our logic. Is x less than the x upper? No. So this is 0. Is x greater than x lower? Yeah, it is. So we do meet at least one conditoin condition here. We run that. x meets one condition. Yep. And that's how you go from there. Thank you for watching. I hope this helped to kind of give a picture, especially this cornhole example. I thought this was a good one. Go ahead, watch the other review videos if you need to on for loops. This brings in your for loop. If you need to review the other logical things, I hope to do a video. I want to actually play cornhole and do a better simulator and build this out more. Um, but I hope this was helpful. Let me know, too, if you like this style of me coding more live as opposed to just having code already presented. Either way works. This is for you guys. If you have any questions, throw it in the comments. I will help you guys out, no problem. My MATLAB license does end in four days. I'm working on getting these videos out for you. Take care and good luck.
Hey everyone, this is Phil from Phil Parisi Code. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're getting something out of these. If you are, please throw a like and subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you, keep on coding, and enjoy the week.